Well, in Dayton, Ohio, at Sinclair Community College, developmental education is incredibly important. It represents somewhere between 12 to 15 percent of our enrollments in credit instruction. So um, it's a big part of the college. And we know that developmental education is the gateway to the rest of the curriculum, the gateway to the programs um, that lead to completion. So we've had a, a, a focus on developmental student success for a long, long time. And we've made a number of important changes in how we develop or how we approach developmental education and how we develop those approaches. And um, it's a continuous, continuous um, opportunity for us to, um, to, to approach it, to try our, our theory and practice, theory and work, uh, see what works, what, what doesn't work, or what, what maybe be in the middle somewhere there. And so what this initiative has helped us do is uh, intensify that focus, work with other colleges, um, help us connect instead of just talking to ourselves, because we have a lot of experience talking to ourselves about this, and that's not bad, because we need to do that, but actually connect with others nationally and with other experts nationally so that we can connect to the best thinking, the best thinking about what works, what doesn't work, and uh, we've really enjoyed that. In developmental education, there's, there, there are a lot of um, different ideas of how it can and should be approached. We have, um, we have uh, worked with uh, curricular changes to align, for example, math curriculum and developmental math to um, college level math. We have worked on the grading process, uh, the grading um, structure and the grading uh, process by which we grade students, whether or not we give them a grade, um, you know, has been something that we have, uh, a pass-fail versus a letter grade, for example, has been something that we have approached. Um, our advising, our intake, our cut scores, um, how, um, how faculty, um, uh, the techniques that they use to uh, engage the students, all, all that and much more has, has been um, under review, under consideration, uh, for quite some time. Uh, I think what we have learned is that, well, first of all, there is not one silver bullet. I mean, there's not, and, and, uh, and uh, if anybody's found it, please call me. Um, but if, um, if we've learned something, it's that it continues to be a portfolio of things that connects to our students. Um, deep personal connection, connection of the faculty relationship with the students, um, a really good, ample, and well-known by the students, has to be well-known by the students, student support, tutoring, library services, um, access to computers, um, and, and uh, open hours, and, and convenience schedule. Those kinds of things seem to work better for our students than not. And what we need to do in the future is then work through how we're going to improve that and intensify those things that we know work. You know, I've never met a professor that started uh, his or her day uh, thinking, geez, how can I help students fail today? That's not, you know, the faculty are motivated. Faculty want, uh, faculty love students. The faculty love teaching and learning. The faculty love their disciplines. And, uh, and God bless them, they have, they have this love for, for what we do. So it is not a matter of faculty not being motivated at all. It's a matter of understanding um, what might work or not work and, 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 and perhaps working through um, uh, individual differences and, and theories that we might have about how to approach the students and what works and not works. So data, data has been very important for us. Like what, what really shows us what's happening, and uh, and it's it's hard to dispute that and all that. But as far as motivation, that's not an issue. I think uh, one of the areas that um, data has shown um, us the way is an early alert for students um, to get in trouble. You know, and it makes perfect sense. I mean, there's nothing. It doesn't. It doesn't sound like rocket science at all. But you know. Um, the, the whole idea of, of not letting students get too deep into a hole if you can. And many times they come to us already in various, you know, various, with various challenges, so not adding to those challenges. And when we can intervene early 
And when data can show, when data shows so that when you, if you can intervene early, you have a better chance at, at uh, helping those students uh, versus having them um, not be successful. So there's an example. You know, the great, the great um, thing about um, being a part of the national community as, as Sinclair is, is it, it harks back to that old saying, that age old saying of you, you, you learn what you teach. And so every single time somebody comes to us and say, hey, can you, you know, help, you know, Sinclair, can you, can you help us with, with this? Can you let, let us send a team to Sinclair or come to a conference and do a presentation? I'm t we learn more about our shortcomings and our um, strengths and our um, opportunities than we probably teach. So um, uh, we enjoy we enjoy doing that and that being uh, connected with our colleagues, uh, but we uh, really benefit from that. We we learn more than we probably teach. You know the the discussion about the value of college is uh, is so interesting. It's interesting, um, and I think it needs to go on. I need. I think the question needs to happen, but I think we all know. I think we really all know. Uh, that there is uh, just unbelievable, just unbelievable value in uh, education. Um, it, it's it's almost like air and water. I mean, I someone said the other day, uh, and they said it very well. In a developing country, um, the issue might be childhood immunizations and vaccines, and in uh, a country like the United States. The analog is uh, an education and a higher education. I don't think there's really, upon scrutiny, we will find that there's much real um, debate about that. The question about um, what is coming next in college innovation, what is coming uh, next in the, the next way we approach what we do is is just an excellent excellent question and you know I think understanding how to scale human relationships how to scale the um, the mentoring and let me say the word parenting and let me say the word again mentoring uh, because uh, that bundle of relationships and activities, I think, are just as important to our students and to their success as is the quality of information, cognitive information. Um, I think that when we really honest about uh, why our students uh, succeed or do not succeed, it is not necessarily their ability to grasp and process and internalize quantitative information or information overall uh, or knowledge it is the other aspect or aspects of being a person uh, the emotional aspects the um, managing your life with multiple challenges um, uh, financial uh, emotional all that and how we can even better than we have ever done before scale that holistic approach to people and human development. Um, I think we're really pretty good at um, cognitive development. I think we're pretty good. I think we have some pretty good theories and some pretty good practice in, uh, in affective development also, but I think really embracing the entire total person. One size does not fit all. And so um, the scaling and figuring out the mass customization so that we can reach a person where that person's at. And we've approached that. As community colleges, I think we've done a great job of really approaching that. But the future will uh, belong to those that figure out how to really do that well. The number of positive relationships that can have a positive impact on anyone's lives, uh, I think it's really important. I think. I think um, so. What I think you're touching on is the fact that student mentors are important to students, faculty are important to students, advisors are important to students, security, police are important to students, um, parents, family, friends. There are a number of people, and I think the more 
uh, you know, we talk about a support system all the time for people, don't we? We always talk about support systems. So a student needs a support system also, and a student needs a student support system. So as many positive people that can be supportive from different aspects and different in different ways, I think, is critically important. So let's call it a portfolio support, and it's not one of us, or any one of us, it's not one job category. There are a lot of, lot of us that need to support students.